Hello and welcome back to another War Tales guide video. My name is Saiken and I do concise and uh, pretty on point guides around many games. War Tales, one of my favorite ones. Today I bring you something a little bit different, a guide to end game gear and party. I always am interested when I'm starting a game what a real end game party is going to look like and since I played around 500 hours on that safe game in particular I just want to showcase uh, to you how an end game party looks like, how the individual characters work and what uh, builds and equipment they would have. I We'll go through each of the character classes just briefly and then give you a little bit of showcasing of how they play in combat. So the way that my party is built up is I have one of each character class with the exception of archers where I have a second one just historically but I would uh, potentially go with one each class. Two of my characters are tanks, three of my characters are what I would call off tanks or midfield so melee DPS with medium armor and three characters are glass cannons so pure DPS. So very nice spread of all of the different uh, characters. And um, just to uh, highlight uh, the general concept of most of the characters whilst for tanks a lot of the armor and uh, the um, guard rating is important because they want to soak as much damage as possible as well as want to create as much valor as possible for all of the other characters the most uh, potent damage output is what counts. We're going to see how that is going to play uh, into uh, the game so we have two characters that uh, should soak damage and create a lot of Valor points. We do have a few characters that are Valor neutral and just need to deal damage and we do have a few characters that actually spend Valor and deal damage. So let's jump into the first part which is going through each character with their equipment and uh, the build idea behind it. If you want more details for specific classes I do have build guides around that. And afterwards we go into part two where I want to really give you a brief highlight of how every single class plays and just how good they are in combat in the end game. All right, without further ado, let's jump into part one, which is the equipment and the build of each of the characters. So we do have our swordsman, um, which is one of uh, the tanks together with the brute. So swordsman and mace wielder are going to be both of the tanks. Um, I can could go into a lot of detail why I would choose those two classes, but in a nutshell, I think they make the best uh, tanks possible. So with our uh, swords uh, fighter, we do have a full epic gear. I am running Copus, which is a sword that uh, you uh, get relatively late in the Drombach uh, region, um, mainly because uh, the fighter here is built on a retaliation build where they are uh, oftentimes retaliated and uh, killing every fatal blow gives two valor on top of it i'm using a uh, oil that gives a uh, 50 percent chance to regain one valor whenever we're using a valor skill and on top of that they gain valor for every time they are engaging with an opponent plus every time uh, the unit uses one or more valor points they have a 50 percent chance to get in position which would double their guard uh, that's more useful for uh, situations where the guard is reduced. Instead of hardening oil, you could use defense oil, where this character is immune uh, to uh, AoE attacks from other characters in the group, making it easier to lend, uh, for instance, melee AoE attacks. Um, as, uh, the, um, as the core equipment for them, I'm using the commander's battle plate, which is the reward for the legends uh, of uh, the arena and Saga, which is the shield reward of the legends of arena. All of them, as you can see, are fully uh, altered. So they do have three stars and they are fully upgraded to match the level, which brings us to a whooping 1100 armor uh, on top of 250 health with 80% guard. So that is effective hit points um, of nearly 6,000. If you look, uh, if you look just how much damage they can mitigate. On top of that, in terms of build, 
We're running the classical fighter build to destabilize uh, and remove guard from opponents. Uh, whenever we engage in combat, we gain extra Valor. We always uh, get deflection when we engage in combat, so 70% damage reduction. On top of that, we got protection, so that's, and we are capping at 80% damage reduction. We're immune to uh, bleeding, burning, and poison. Matter of fact, if we're affected by any of that, our own damage improves. When we're disengaging, we're only 50% likely to get an attack of opportunity and instead the other 50% were giving an attack of opportunity. Now I could have uh, skilled counter-attack which my, means the first time uh, that you engage during a round you also get repost for some extra uh, counter-attacking. They nerfed the build of repost to make it only trigger once a round but instead I went for the exhort skill which really allows critical hit and critical damage of everybody to increase by 30% as a legendary skill. So the other tank would be Miss Grell. I'm moving on a little bit faster. Um, Urkish's Maze, which is a legendary weapon that uh, you gain uh, from Ur defeating Urkish. Uh, Rampart, which is a legendary out of a tome, um, as well as the Helm of Legends. Unfortunately, at this point, there aren't enough heavy armor items in uh, the game uh, to have full epic armor for everyone, which means here we have a nice Admiral's uh, breastplate uh, three star uh, from the new content highest level highest uh, armor rating we're not clocking in the same 1024 but we're clocking in 880 in terms of runes uh, we got the new uh, uh, runes that allow for guard and armor just to cap out on guard once uh, guard is kept out i'm typically increasing movement so that's really the tanking side of the team let's move on to the actual damage side of the team. The damage side of the team starts with melee AoE DPS and that's where the Halibardier and the Executioner are coming in. Both of them do have AoE melee attacks. They are fantastic for just clusters of melee as well as uh, the eventual redness that you're doing once in a while. So the idea by, uh, for both of them is to have a skill that just deals a lot of damage. For the Halibardier it's Controlled Whirlwind where you want to hit at least three enemies and then it's just going to be such a huge amount of damage. For uh, the Executioner it's uh, the Executioner skill where again you want to hit multiples and if possible kill them because every single fatal blow um, triggers another cutting maelstrom. If you hit four enemies with that that's four spins and for every single additional one that you kill that's another spin so up to seven eight spins which typically means enemies die uh, so both of them have a very very high kill potential in terms of uh, their uh, skills you see that both of them are currently rocking a solid hundred percent crit rate uh, uh, rate which is very important uh, typically that comes together out of uh, traits path bonuses uh, uh, tormentor as well as equipment bony i am using critical hit runes as well as movement uh, runes of the uh, on them so that they are nice and fast but at the same time just hit like a truck um, in terms of the weapon we're using liberator uh, for the halibut here uh, mainly because it's the strongest uh, single um, hit weapon um, i am uh, using uh, the hardening oil here um, simply to allow to be in position and basically get a doubling of the guard. I'm using that a lot for many of the characters where I think they they will uh, from time to time uh, be in melee combat. So I could Im improve that and deal more damage um, like the setup is here with JP Pauly for, uh, for instance, uh, the executioner where I'm using explosive oil on the weapon uh, to have a 50% chance to deal just the same amount of uh, damage that I just dealt, 50% uh, of the damage that I just dealt to adjacent uh, creatures. Uh, the question that you need to ask yourself is uh, do you want to alpha strike or do you want a little bit more sustain and the way that I build it is the executioner just wants to execute whilst uh, the halibardier oftentimes stands in the front the way that uh, they are skilled they are getting repost um, 
uh, is, uh, is the ability the moment that they are not engaged. So not only would they get double guard, which uh, for them would be a solid 62% um, of damage reduction on 550 armor, but on top of that, uh, they would uh, also get repost. So if they are getting attacked, they can counter attack. So that's really what they're doing. Um, I do have uh, the uh, Song of the Ancients here, which allows everybody to become motivated. Uh, that's a, another nice little damage boost of 10% uh, if, if I want to go really ham. Uh, that is definitely a good ability on top of the other abilities. Moving on from both of the melee AOE DPS to the single target DPS, uh, I got the Pugilate and uh, the Assassin or the Ranger as the single target melee DPS. Let's start with the Pugy, um, who is uh, similarly spec'd, so we do have 26% uh, guard. I uh, decided in their particular case to go with uh, uh, putrid oil instead of uh, the hardened oil. So instead of having 52% guard uh, to prevent the major retaliations, I rather prefer to stack up fe uh, fever, um, which is uh, damage taken increased by uh, by 10%, really uh, fundamentally underpinning uh, their ability to kill bosses in a single uh, turn. They got a nice little uh, legendary helmet, which each time uh, they deal critical damage, uh, you gain one uh, veil the Veiler, and with a multi-attack that happens just very often, they are far above 100% crit. Unfortunately, only one, uh, only two um, legendary medium armors in the game, so still rocking the normal craftable stuff. I got uh, the Powered Mother of Pearl here, uh, which uh, allows to ignore guard completely for them so that they can go all ham. Um, as their skill, I'm going with Tyrant uh, just to build up rage on top of it, use stance knowledge into stance mastery, and then of course thrashing as uh, the absolute maximum single DPS. When it comes to our Ranger, we got uh, full legendary equipment. I personally use uh, Krupa Sax, uh, because uh, that is the best dagger in my perspective uh, for a uh, combination with the assassin build uh, that I'm uh, using whenever uh, the weapon is hitting. It automatically applies one poison, not that that really happens very often because we're hitting so hard enemies typically die. Enemies are also slowed and have slow reflexes, so no attacks of opportunity for a round. On top of that fever, so 10% uh, stackable damage debuff. As an offhand, Faceless comes into uh, play, which is the legendary offhand that allows you to throw as many, um, so it never depletes, throw as many um, axes as you want. There is no axe uh, skill. Instead, what's happening whenever you're using a, um, a skill, it throws an axe. On top of which, I have skilled instinctive throw. So that's a second axe that is um, flying off of every single uh, skill that we're using. Uh, you could use a trinket for 30% extra uh, uh, damage uh, with, uh, with offhand um, ranged uh, throwing attacks to really maximize on that, but it's not necessary. Uh, Nagol's headband and Nagol's cloak uh, specifically with a nice little critical uh, strike. We're rocking 130%, so even with critical hit reduction on some of the enemies, that's still 100% crit chance with almost 200 dexterity. Uh, the character is just going to shred uh, through enemies, and we're going to see how they play. And finally, I want to go through the archer, uh, where I'm using the indomitable, indomitable one. I've used the war bow for a long period of time, which for those unaware is basically a bow that shoots once, once you crit, it shoots a second time. But once you begin to one-shot enemies, even harder ones, that's not as good anymore. Indomitable one, on the other hand, is pretty straightforward, shoots an, in a line and uh, penetrates through all of the enemies. You can combine it uh, with aim so that it's a really long line, on top of which enemies are being pushed back. And uh, I decided uh, that we put infectious oil on top of it, with, where there is a very solid uh, chance that you uh, uh, apply 50% of the damage that you anyways did on top of it. So very often the enemies that won't die immediately will die uh, from bleeding uh, damage on top of that. We're running Smot's uh, tabard as well as uh, the Coif of Smot. 
which is a very very nice com uh, combination and finally the trophy of legends which once per fight this character can use two basic attacks which again we're using for piercing arrows to just have more aoe attacks as a noticeable skill Besides all of the damage skills, I would uh, put Suppressive Fire up, which is really a nice AoE damage. So the way that the party splits, uh, the Archer as well as uh, the melee DPS are uh, responsible for AoE kills. These two are single damage and these two are tanks. So lots of theory and lots of kind of showcasing end game gear. Now you wonder yourself, uh, what would a proper fight of them look like? And I want to showcase one situation for each of the seven characters that you've just seen, just to highlight how they fare in battle. For that, we're going to take the strongest possible um, uh, fight circumstances that we can fight, which is basically um, the extreme difficulty, highest level 14, um, uh, maybe three star with uh, reinforcement fights and we're just going to take a look at how each of the uh, different builds do in those particular situations all right let's start with the tanks we find ourselves in a situation where there is a massive bear 800 hit points uh, deep right behind us it's just a level eight bear um, because it's a pet but nonetheless uh, the um, topics that I'm going to show you apply to any single opponent. So Nemri um, will naturally engage the bear um, as usual we're going to use one of our lower skills just to get in there you can see we're generating a lot of valor get in position get deflection going so we have like the maximum amount of defense we're disengaging giving him a nice little strike following up with a new engagement uh, continuing our strikes disengaging again with another strike he's almost down the poor uh, fellow is wondering what have i done wrong uh, to her in order to deserve that treatment and the answer is really not much uh, you were just in uh, the wrong place at the wrong time so um, he goes berserk um, and we disengage ah, this time we're getting uh, hit which is fine we're weakening uh, him trying our luck again getting yet again hit but finally we're kicking him for 500 i just wanted to like go over here and uh, continue the rampage but unfortunately our uh, um, rolls our 50 50 when disengaging we're not 100 percent in our favor look at that we lost like what 20 um, armor in the process 1050 is what we're having this guy was just we're, we went um, head to head with a relatively strong melee opponent and we were just crushing him. In order to maximize the results, I could have led with uh, Taunt, which is weakening them and would have taken only one point of damage per hit. But yeah, for a tank, that does not only create an ultra amount of Valor, but it also on top of it deals damage. And uh, if need be in harder fights, we're just going to stay there and uh, do our attack routine and then check and let the next one deal damage very similar concept with miss grell look at that she has plenty of options for starters uh, one of the classics that you're potentially using as well is getting her orderly and then since she's the leader galvanizing the troops so i could hit four people here essentially gain eight valor if we wouldn't already be full uh, so that's basically mechanic number one for her Mechanic number two is going into the back line and making sure that these guys are having a harsh time. And one way of doing that is uh, starting uh, by basically hitting them, then disconnecting uh, and hitting them right again. There you go. That's one kill. Following up with a second one. Nice little crit for 300 points of damage. Not bad for a tank. We're engaging. We're disconnecting. Um, or disengaging and we have essentially just killed an entire side we have even a couple of attacks left over we had taunt we did have the actual wrath of uh, Erkishet uh, at our disposal and she hasn't even taken a single point of damage uh, that is fantastic so the tanks are holding very strong 
Okay, we're back in the snow. This time we want to see how the halibut deer, uh, the spearman, is going to work. And typically I would need to set it up in a way where the spearman is uh, the second line. But I specifically want to show you just how well they can hold their own. So we can see an opening on the right hand side with quite a few enemies uh, there. And for starters, we're going to Whirlwind for just flat out 600 points of damage to every single one of these poor souls, uh, followed by a nice move in and 300 points of damage plus a nice destabilization. So what we want to do in this case is I'm particularly going to stand right in front here, getting Fury, getting my repost, so that you can see just how little damage we're taking and how much we're dealing in return. So we've taken around 100 points of damage. You can see we're still very much fine with over 60% of guard. Um, mind you, we're fighting against very, very strong defenders. Uh, these guys here um, will perform attacks of opportunity um, when when they are being attacked upon. They are very strong guards, come in with 700 and 400, so 1,100 points of effective life. And uh, also do have uh, right around the same amount of guard. If you put that into context, our off tank has as much guard and as much uh, kind of effective health as their main tanks with the exception that we're dealing more damage. So that's really the Halliburdier. Um, the good part about the Halliburdier skill is it increases for every single uh, member that you're hitting. So three hits are already uh, one shots, but if you ever pull off a four hit, oh my Lord, this is just ridiculous damage. Which nicely brings us to the Executioner, JP Pauly. Um, with his massive axe. I'm using anvils uh, just to y use the maximum upfront damage. Every critical uh, hit here gains one fervor, so 10% uh, damage increase, and that is stackable. Uh, what we're going to do is we're uh, uh, going to have a preview of the challenging shout uh, so that we're, uh, we can move in. Challenging shout will draw all of them close to us, and we really have access to the back line. This time in the back line we do have tanks here, which is absolutely hilarious as they put their uh, best defended characters uh, to the back. But that will really make no difference because look at that, that's four attacks um, as a standard and then uh, one attack per killed opponent. Let that sink in. That's a thousand hit points, that's a thousand hit points, that's 800 hit points, 800 hit points. And we're not even done um, since we are fuming with aggression we're continuing to just move on and you can see fervor is stacking up like crazy we're already at four stacks of fervor would the chips have fallen a little bit more up um, in our uh, favor and these guys wouldn't be like so ultra tanky we could uh, follow up with the wrath and just uh, absolutely demolish them that way but i think that in itself was already a very very good demonstration of his abilities all right in order to showcase the pugilist i need an enemy that is strong enough to really justify them so this is potentially one of the strongest enemies that you can find lisbeth coming in with a very solid 2000 2500 and she's euphoric uh, once she gets going uh, there is no stopping however our pugilist might be able to weather the storm as we're moving up in aggressive uh, stance we are starting uh, to thrash her let's go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen hundred to zero <laughs> five thousand uh, points of damage and we haven't even used another skill let that sink in as a nice demonstration of how good that class can be. Okay, time for our assassin to shine. Not many enemies left over, but I wanted to showcase a couple of things. Now, these are all high level enemies. Let's just take a look of how uh, a 
assassin could hit them. So for a starter, we're opening with around 700 hit points worth of damage. That bear is, by the way, uh, nicely bleeding and so almost dead. Uh, we are just using any random skill uh, and you can see that that triggers two throwing attacks, mind you, for 117 each. Uh, which isn't too bad. We can use further skills even if motivation doesn't hit anyone. Uh, nonetheless, the axes are still uh, being thrown. Every single thrown axe resets the movement, so we do have a huge amount of movement, followed up by a nice little 500 points of instant uh, damage. Double axe. into stabbing into their back and that unfortunately was already it with that particular fight but the point is that build is very strong as you can nicely clean up those were three kills and we were only th halfway through our rotation there were multiple other skills that we could use we could engage then disengage and every single time more uh, projectiles would have been thrown let's take a look at the power of uh, the archer we uh, remember that we want to deal as much AoE damage as possible, found ourselves a nice little encounter here in the middle of the swamp. What we want to do with the archer is to deal as much damage as possible. So we're going to start by using the ultimate ability Suppress a Fire. That will slow everyone down. That in itself was already a thousand points of damage. You can see these here are uh, very, very tough opponents. Every single one of them level 14. Coming in with quite a bit of uh, hit points. Their tanks, if they do have uh, them, come in at a thousand hit points. So nothing to uh, scuff at. And really what we want to do is we want to maximize the potential damage that we're dishing out. So we're moving in. Uh, we're going to strike hit both of them well, that's a kill and a potential pushback into moving up using aim so that we can hit a triplet that's another nearly thousand points of damage followed up by a nice little uh, strike for 500 points of damage mind you all of this is not inflated by any form of uh, later combat buffs this is just base damage unbuffed uh, pure damage of the ranger and if we remind ourselves there were like seven eight enemies over here um, we have killed three or four of them this wolf here is almost dead I could even go as far as to sprint their wrath attack and uh, and kill him so uh, really what we are left with are two enemies uh, that one of them has 300 points of bleeding damage so that's a dead man walking and they are slowed so they will never reach uh, their target they are essentially killed as well so if I put those two out then really what's left over is just one slaughterer uh, who uh, takes 50 points of damage and is uh, out of armor and has half hit points left. Not too bad for just one round of going ham. So that brings us nicely to the end of today's guide episode. That was an endgame party in full swing. Let me know in the comments down below which of the class was most impressive for you, which one uh, did you like the most, and was there anything in particular that uh, you were surprised about? I hope you enjoyed the showcasing of an endgame party in War Tales. I wish you all the best. I do have plenty of guides uh, to showcase how I build, how I equip, how I upgrade, and how I would approach the game. If you want your party to look like that someday, there's a good uh, amount of resources available. If you like the content, let's reciprocate uh, the time that I put into it and leave a comment and a like down below that will help the YouTube algorithm to find the video and recommend it to more people. Thanks a lot for your time and see you in the next episode. Bye bye.